Does the government work for us or do we work for the government? Tonight, the consequences of the government doing to the economy whatever it can get away with. At the tail end of his tenure in office, after he had borrowed more than a trillion dollars to bring about death and destruction and regime change in Iraq, then President George W. Bush proposed TARP. TARP was a $700 billion federal government giveaway financed by more borrowing and intended to be a government purchase of mortgage-backed securities and real estate so as to save banks and insurance companies from their own risky investments. As we know, TARP became welfare for Wall Street as the feds decided whom to bail out using dollars borrowed in the taxpayers' names. Question, where does the federal government get the authority to save any business or industry from the consequences of its own freely chosen behavior? Answer, the federal government does whatever it can get away with. It doesn't abide the Constitution, and it doesn't respect natural rights of persons. It's not interested in fairness, and most of what it does is intended to keep those in power in their jobs. President Bush actually claimed that he had to destroy the free market in order to save it. Before TARP, President Bush had given away $300 billion. And since TARP, President Obama has given away a trillion. Last week, he announced he wants to give away another half trillion. The federal government is one of limited powers defined in the Constitution. Nowhere among them is the power to take tax, to take tax dollars or to borrow money which the taxpayers must repay and give it or lend it to anyone. There are many reasons for this absence of this power, but foremost among them is that the America the founders gave us had at its economic core a free market. To the founders, free, free market meant free from the government. The founders knew that government interference in the economy, even under the guise of helping someone out who had made poor decisions or, had, or who had invested and lost the investment, would interfere with the personal freedom of others. They understood that the essence of government is the negation of freedom. Thus, any money taken from the taxpayers and given to someone the government likes always hurts the taxpayers from whom it was taken and then encourages the government's friends to be careless and hope for their own bailout if things go badly. We still owe back to the lenders the trillion that President Bush borrowed to wage war in Iraq and the 700 billion he borrowed for TARP and the trillion President Obama has already borrowed and given away. The founders also understood that all decisions to use government dollars to compensate persons who lost investments would inevitably un be unfair to those not helped. There is simply no line that the government can draw with fidelity to everyone's natural rights and to the Constitution, on one side of which the feds will help out those it likes, and on the other side of which it will let folks die on the vine. To assure that the feds would stay out of economic decisions, the founders wrote into the Constitution the Due Process Clause, which prevents the feds from taking money from A and giving it to B without a jury finding fault on the part of A that caused losses to B. That's why the founders wrote into the Constitution the Contracts Clause, which prohibits the states from interfering with freely made economic choices. And that's why the Constitution has two equal protection clauses one to require the federal government and the other to require the states to treat similarly situated people in a similar manner. But starting with TARP and continuing on to President Obama's stimulus packages, we see that these constitutional provisions have been violated all the time. How did the feds decide to bail out AIG and not Lehman Brothers? Was it because Lehman was a rival to Goldman Sachs and the Treasury Secretary at the time was a former chairman of Goldman Sachs who owned some of its stock? How did the feds decide to bail out the UAW at the expense of those who loaned money to GM and Chrysler? Might it have been the political support that the unions gave to President Obama? And why did the feds lend and lose half a billion in taxpayer dollars to that probably corrupt startup company, Solyndra? Might it be because Solyndra's principal investor is also one of President Obama's biggest contributors? As you can see, these arguments that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land are not just academic. Disregarding the Constitution profoundly affects all of us. When the government ignores the Constitution it is sworn to uphold, we all lose freedom and property. And what we lose to the government, we cannot get back. From New York. Defending freedom.